What is a software as a service agreement, otherwise known as SaaS? And will ChatGPT be able to produce an agreement that is of a lawyer standard? So the first thing I'm going to do is going to ask Mr. ChatGPT, can you please create a software as a service agreement? Now let's see what he says, or it says, or she says. So this agreement is made on this particular date, looks good between the service provider and they set out all the things you need to identify the parties agreement sounds good so far and the customer name so the first part states provision of services the provider hereby grants the customer a non-exclusive non-transferable right to access and use the services solely for the customer's internal businesses subject to terms and conditions of this agreement now i'm not going to fault chat gp for saying this because it is true that they are providing services my first key issue with chat gpt's agreements is that it did not go through definitions bootcamp training so you can see in this clause service is a big s which means that it's meant to, to mean something or mean something more at least to set out the specific scope of what services mean but it is nowhere defined in this agreement. Which comes to the core of the matter, right? What software as a service are you actually providing? If they cannot even get that right, then this agreement is useless. The second clause they have is service level and support. The provider shall use commercially reasonable efforts to make the services available at the monthly uptime percentage, as defined here in where? <laughs> of at least 99.9% .9 subject to planned downtime and forced major events. Now, if you're the service provider and you're a startup and you know that you're working through your first few pilot trials, you're gonna hate this loss. It essentially guarantees to the customer that you're gonna be good 99.9% .9 and all startups will know that we're, we're gonna screw up at some point in time. So this is not a clause that is necessary in an agreement. So ChatGPT, you're dangerous. Now let's go to the next point. It says the customer shall pay the provider the fees as described in the schedule of fees attached here too. Now, we go back to the first point that we mentioned on the format of SaaS agreement, right? For a lot of the SaaS providers, your fees will be in this page that's called pricing or in a tab on your website. It would not be a schedule that's attached to the end of the document. The second thing that I see startups facing is our fee structures change. We change our fee structures according to our clients. We change the fee structure according to what makes sense for the market. So if we have a very rigid schedule of fees attached that is hard to negotiate, that may not actually work out very flexibly for the startup. So I'll think twice. About that. The next clause is on data ownership and protection. Now, this is an important one. It says the customer shall retain all right title and interest in and to the customer data. Okay, I think that's correct. The provider shall maintain appropriate administrative, physical, and technical safeguards to protect the security, confidentiality, and integrity of customer data. Now, this second representation is something I would strike out maybe if I were acting for the provider because this is additional right and warranty that you don't need to put in your agreement to expose your liability, right? But if I'm acting for the customer, obviously I'm going to gun for that. But the second thing that we need, like most SaaS providers will need, is the ability to analyze customer data, aggregate it, anonymize it if necessary, in order to improve their services. And that's something I would actually want to put in. Next clause they have is confidential information. Each party acknowledges that it may be exposed or require communication or data from the other person that's confidential and not intended for disclosure. Each party agrees to hold such information in strict confidence and not to disclose such information. Now, as a SaaS provider, you need to think about whether you can actually give that warranty and whether or not you want to give it in such a bombastic manner because some of these SaaS providers actually trade data. You got to think about is there any information that I'm going to be deriving from the customer using my services that I need a carve up for. Number six, I would say this clause, given that it's three lines long, looks a little bit naked for me and I would expect a, a bit stronger language to say that the customer acknowledges that the IP rights that they use and that's provided by the provider is totally owned by the provider. B, I would expect another clause to say that the customer agrees that it is licensing the IP from the service provider. They're not gaining any ownership in this SaaS product. But we might also need to cover things like 
Any IP that's created from the customer's use of this SaaS platform belongs to who? What is also blatantly missing from this agreement is something along the lines of the customer agrees that they will not be reverse engineering, abusing the software to do naughty things. So you need to put all these in your terms of use or your SaaS terms to protect yourself. The next clause is on warranties, disclaimers, and limitation of liability. The first part says that the service is provided as is, and the service provider disclaims all warranties. I think that's fine. I would expect maybe a more beefed up language, but it kind of does the job. The second part says, notwithstanding anything to the contrary, the provider's liability to the customer will be limited to the fees paid by the customer to the provider in the six months preceding the claim. You might also want to think about things like time caps on liability and also being a bit more express about something that we call in law called consequential damage or indirect losses. Next two clauses is termination and miscellaneous. So on clause A, termination, this agreement may be terminated by either party upon written notice. If the other party materially breaches its representations, warranties or obligation and such breach is not cured within 30 days of such notice. Now, I have a problem with this clause because this clause essentially means that neither party can terminate the SaaS services unless someone actually breached the term of this agreement. We all know that sometimes we need to terminate the agreement because we no longer want to use the services anymore, for example. What we call that in law is termination without cause. And then, finally, on clause 9, it's miscellaneous, which is, hey, this agreement's governed by the laws of whichever jurisdiction and any dispute shall be resolved in a certain way, which is fine. And then in witness whereof the parties have executed this agreement. Now, I have always had an issue with a signature block like that because there are some agreements in law that you need a witness to sign. And in this situation, it says that you need to sign this agreement with the witness, which is not required for SaaS agreement. So this is giving yourself extra work, extra trouble for no reason. But ChatGBT, I pray that you go for definition classes bootcamp and start defining your terms properly because it's killing me. We hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed me brutalizing ChatGPT SaaS agreement. Now, if you need a slightly better SaaS agreement, do check out fdlight.sg where we have SaaS agreements of three different types for all types of businesses that are startup friendly and excellento as always. If you liked our video, remember to like, share and subscribe and tell us what you like to watch next. Goodbye!